is a little different because if it's just Pastor George and me, but that can be really a nice change. We're just changing it up a little bit, right, Pastor George? And and we have um, some choruses that if you've been in the church for a while, you'll remember singing a long time ago, but they're good. And uh, we're going to have a good time worshiping God, singing these ones. Let's sing together. Don't focus on me or anything else. Just, just praise Jesus from your heart. it out. Anyone thankful to God for anything this week? Brian. I thank God for the healing of my hip. I've been walking in for, for months and the healing is coming. Each day it gets stronger, stronger and better. I just praise him for his healing power. Thank you, Lord. His healing of Brian's hip. Thank you, Lord. Anyone thank else? for seasons and the change of seasons. Mm-hmm. So beautiful. The sun's shining. My tulips are coming off. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, I want to thank God for my husband, Jefferson. He was admitted last week at the hospital, but I thank God that he's well. He was here today. Oh, thank praise God. the Lord. Yes. Jefferson is doing well yes. out of the hospital. Yes. Oh, praise yes. the Lord. Anyone else? I thank God for my, uh, uh, in my healing of my lungs, that I had a lung infection. So that I can play tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so thankful for that too. <laughs> Wendy? Thank God for getting me through a very stressful last couple of weeks. Amen. Oh. Praise the Lord for getting Wendy through all of that hard stuff the last couple of weeks. James. Awesome. <laughs> Aww, thank you, God, for giving James this beautiful gift of being a father and uncle. Okay, let's, let's, are you guys ready for another one? <laughs> okay.
Who remembers that one? <laughs> it's a beautiful one. words true, true of us, true of our hearts, Lord, that we would desire you more than anything else in this world, that we would long after you, that we would desire you above all else, that we would have a hunger and a thirst for your word, Lord God, to be in your presence, to be close to you, Lord God, in prayer, with you in conversation every day and listening to your guidance, your leading, Lord Jesus, that you would take our eyes off of worthless things. Help us, Lord God, to surrender to you, Lord Jesus, and live that abundant life that you have for us. In serving you, Lord, find our joy in your presence, find our peace and our comfort. You are everything to us, Lord Jesus, and you truly are everything that we need, Lord God. Help us to live that way. And we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you may be seated.
So here we go. Here we go with all those nice sunny days and people don't show up because they're barbecuing. <laughs> I think what we're going to do is we're going to have a barbecue here every Sunday afternoon. Woohoo! And then that way people can stay and uh, and fellowship. I'm not in charge of these things. I just talk. <laughs> we okay now? You're on. Okay. It's that button that says mute, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, it's difficult. So, y'all good? All the way from Beaverton. They didn't no. stay home to barbecue. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. See that? Man, we had a guy here this morning, and he showed up because uh, because the 103 guys were here. So he heard on the radio, he was looking for a fellowship in Keswick. He just moved here. And he heard on the radio they were coming, so he came here. Nice. And uh, yeah, really nice guy went out for lunch. Interesting, just like all y'all. Very interesting. Aren't we a motley crew? Uh, yeah. Wow, this is great. And uh, this morning, he did things a little differently. So I don't know, did anybody see all the hands that went up? They what? There was a few. But did you see who they were? Uh, no, I just went. Okay, so this is this is another reason we got to have people come in the front because they put their hand up. You never see them again. You can't disciple them. Yeah, who who on that idea? But that was good. At least uh, he said five people put their hands up, right? Okay, to receive Jesus Christ. So that's good. That's good. Is um, what was that? Or to recommit their life. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So that was excellent. It was a good morning. It was a good morning. I like what, uh, I, I like now, he just, when he announced that now at nighttime on 100.3, they're going to have the praise and worship songs and not not the stuff they had before. So that's exciting because I like that. I might start listening again. Um, uh, who? Seven till midnight. Beautiful. And and my daughter was saying that on her way to church this morning, she's telling Dave, man, I'm listening to this. She says, she said, on the way to church, she uh, accidentally, trust me, it was an accident. No, it she, wasn't. <laughs> I'm going to have to disown her. But she was listening to the country station. And I know. Did you, should, you hear everybody gasping? <gasps> yeah. I think it's uh, 97.7. 93.7, and uh, and they they were playing uh, gospel tunes. That's something, eh? So I don't know why they do that, but that's cool. Because it's Sunday. Yeah, but it's a secular station. It's, what's going on? This world is falling apart. That's good. Isn't that great, eh? Man, there's some good stuff in amongst all of this weirdness. I was talking to a, a woman at the Walmart because I'm sometimes I'm the greeter there, <laughs> and um, I just started talking. She's 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 not a church person, not a Christian, not a follower of Jesus, nothing. And and I, I said to her, I said, so what do you think about what's going on? And she says, I think it's time we all started standing up for what we believe. And, and I said, really? She says, oh yeah, this is a mess what, what's going on and so confused. She talked about her kids in public school and the worries that she has going on. And um, and then this other guy that's listening to the conversation, he comes over, by the time I'm done, there was 500, 600 people. <laughs> and um, so, so he starts saying, he says, you know what? He says, I think all this is gonna change. And he's not a church guy either. He's like, all this is going to change. He says, just as it swung so far this way, it'll swing back again. And uh, I said, well, I hope so. I said, but one time it's not going to. The Bible says so. But, but I said, I, I, I kind of hope that it's going to swing back again because God wants none to perish. He wants all of us to, you know, now there's eight or nine people. And we, <laughs> we really had a good time in the Walmart. And, and I didn't get kicked out this time. That's nice. What a nice change, eh? I think it's because I had a bag of milk in my hand. But anyway, um, 
but don't be afraid to share. This guy, this guy spoke good this morning, eh? And talking about sharing our faith and talking to people. And uh, I was so encouraged. I, I'm just, I'm sorry for rambling. I'm just, uh, I gave up drugs for this, you know. This is, this is great. Man. We got to uh, we got to pray, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for the way you love us and care for us. Thank you, Father, for the things you did this morning. Be with those five people. Bless them, Lord. Pour out your Spirit upon them. Keep them close to you. Surround them with people that can encourage them and disciple them. Now, Father, we pray that they would. They would return. They'd let us know who they are so that we can follow up with them. Thank you so much. Thank you for blessing us and loving us. I can't say that enough. Thank you for healing up George and Eileen. I'm so excited for them. What a, what a, what a mess. George doesn't like sitting around. He's busy. And, uh, and you, you heal them up so he can get back to work. Thank you that he could play the piano at the mission on Saturday. That's fantastic. Father, we pray for tonight. We pray as we look into your word that your Holy Spirit would just be guiding us and leading us into truth. We need to hear the truth. Jesus is the truth. And he'll set us free. And when we're free, we're free indeed. Thank you so much, Lord. You're such a good God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, wow. Alrighty. I, just before I came up here, my son's talking to me. He's the security guy downstairs, right? He stops me and he says, Dad, and he, he's got all these great ideas going through his head, but he's, he's dumping them on me and like I'm like, you know me, the one-track mind guy. And now I got all these things floating around in my head. So when this comes out really weird, just straighten it out yourself. <laughs> Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 to 14. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, El Shaddai. I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. When you see that word blameless, I've heard people say, well, we need to be without sin. We need to be, we need to be people that, that people can't pin stuff on. We need to be walking above the standard of the world. Blameless, that's actually, that's actually a Hebrew word, to me. To me means complete. To walk before God blameless is to walk before God complete. You're complete in Christ Jesus. You know, you know when you, you know, Jerry Maguire, and, will you complete me? She doesn't complete you. Jesus Christ completes you. We're all, we're all like half wits. We're, we're half a person. We're, we're, there's a huge part of us missing when we don't have Jesus Christ. We need to walk before God and, we, and in doing so, we are complete. We are complete. We're everything God wants us to be. It doesn't mean perfect. It doesn't mean without sin. We can't do that. We can't do that. There's, there's a, there's a, if, if we belong to the, the holiness movement, if we were Nazarene or we were free Methodist or we were Methodist, we would, we would say that there's such a thing as entire sanctification. It's a, it's, it's a place you get to where you no longer sin. And a lot of people in other uh, denominations, other followers of Jesus believe that, that we get to a place where we don't sin. That's not true. In fact, that's a lie from hell. And it's a scary one because when you think that you can walk perfectly without sin, it's so easy to fall. You give up because you keep falling and you go, I can't do this. I can't be like all the other people. They're not blameless either that way. They're not innocent. We're all sinners. And every one of us sin all the time. That doesn't mean you go stealing stuff. And you, you, What it means is that we are not what God wants us to be, except that 
because of Christ's righteousness, because of Jesus' righteousness that's given to us, we are complete in the eyes of God because now we are righteous people. Okay? You understand that? So don't try and say, well, I'm going to be blameless. I'm going to be without sin. You cannot do that. You cannot. By the way, the, the Free Methodist Church in Canada no longer teaches entire sanctification. I think it's because the pastors got together and said, you know what? I'm a failure. I haven't been able to be entirely sanctified. And all the other pastors go, oh, thank goodness, us too. The Bible says when you sin, you have an advocate in Christ Jesus. When you sin. Well, what do you mean? I'm entirely sanctified. No, you're not. You're going to sin. You're going to sin. You're not going to try to. You're walking before the Lord. You're not going to try to. We, 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 we try not to live in sin. The Bible says do not live continuously in sin. We don't do that. But we will sin. Because we're not perfect until Jesus returns. Blameless. Tamim. Tamim. In case you want to write that down, T-A-M-M-I-M. Nobody? Okay. <clears throat> that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Again, here's God telling Abraham, I'm going to keep my covenant. I'm going to give you children. He, what, what age? He's 99 years old, for goodness sakes. Leave the old guy alone. <laughs> no, no. I'm going to multiply you. You're going to have children. <laughs> well, then Abraham fell on his face. You see, that's because God's not going to multiply you. No, no. Anyway, um, he fell on his face. And God, he fell on his. Why do you think he fell on his face? God just said, God appeared to Abraham and he said, I am God Almighty. I am El Shaddai. If that doesn't make you fall on your face, you have a problem. Abraham is in the presence of God. God appears to him. Isn't that amazing? We call that a Christophany. God appears, the Christ appears to man. In the Old Testament, we call it a Christophany because, because God, nobody has ever seen God, the Bible says. Nobody has ever seen God. As you'll see, as we go through Genesis especially, every time you read the angel of the Lord, it's God that's appearing to people. And, 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 and Abraham will even say so. You'll see. So, and God said to him, see, this is God talking to him. And, 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 and Abraham realizes who God is. And he falls on his face before. I've heard people say, you know, when sometimes you see on TV or you've been to some place and people are falling over all over the place. And they call in it slain in the spirit. There's nowhere in the Bible where people fall over backwards and just kind of lay there unconscious for something. In the Bible, everybody falls down on their face before God. They don't fall backwards. It's kind of an interesting thing. Now, I'm not saying there's no such thing as slain in the spirit, but I don't know. I, I've never experienced it myself, but what I do know is that when I'm in the presence of God, I want to fall prostrate, not prostrate. Pulse. I want to fall face down in front of God. That's what I want to do. Worship him. Abraham fell on his face and God said to him, behold, my covenant is with you. You shall be the father of a multitude of nations. He, re, he re, reiterates his promise, his covenant with Abraham. No longer shall your name be called Abraham. Abraham means father of many. Abram, that's what Abram. But your name shall be Abraham, father of many nations. He's going like, hey, I was going to give you some kids, but now I'm going to give you tons of kids. You can be the father. So he's got to go to his friends and say, guys, my, my, this is the guy with no kids. I got to tell you, my name's been changed. God changed my name from the father of many. And they're going, yeah, because he's got none. And then he goes, to the father of many nations. And they're going, that is even more ridiculous. <laughs> but that's, that's who God changed his name to. Name changes in the Bible are interesting. God changes the name of Peter. Uh, Simon, Simon, your name shall be Peter. 
And, and, and Peter is like a Petros. It's a, it's, a, it's a small stone. People say, oh, that, that means rock. And, and upon this rock, I shall build my church. That's not what Jesus was saying. Petros is a small stone, not a rock. Never was. But, but, but he changed his name because, because it meant something. It meant something. And, 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 and God changed the name of Jacob to Israel. That's the first time the people, of, the people were called Israel was when Jacob wrestled with God. Israel means to wrestle with God. And, and so, his, so every time the name is changed, there's something big going on. God's got a big plan. You know, there's a, actually, there's a passage in the Bible. Um, I think, oh, where, where was that? There's, um, God changes all of our names. That's pretty cool. It's in Revelation. I think it's in Revelation. Yeah, it's in Revelation someplace. Um, the white stone with the name on it? Yeah, that one. I don't have it written down. It just came to mind. So in Revelation, God's going to change our names. He's going to give us each a stone, and on that stone is going to be a new name. Hallelujah. Why, you don't like your name? <laughs> but, but Brian, we have the same name. There's a song that says that there's been new name written down in glory. A new name written down in glory. That's right. So, you know, you might have been known as the father of many, but you might be the father of nations then. But God's going to change your name, and there's a reason for that, and we're starting fresh. It's a, it's a new life. When we became born again, it's funny because some of you know there's, a, there's a, 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 an addict that we've been working with for a lot of years, and, and when, he's, when he's doing his drug thing, in town, he's known as Shane, but then when he's when he gets it together and he's doing okay and he's coming out to fellowship, he calls himself Stu. So we got kind of these two because you you know like one name represents who you were in this world, and one name represents who you are in the next world. And anyway, it's going to be cool. It's it's okay. You don't mind getting a new name. A lot of you change your name anyway. So. Um, but God will give us a new name. So, no longer shall your name be Abram. Your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. You're going to have lots of kids. That doesn't mean that he's going to have, him and Sarah are going to have lots of kids from Sarah. It, it, he might have lots of kids because of the offspring of the offspring of the uh, many nations will come from them. I will make you into nations and kings shall come from you. And the most important king that comes from Abraham is King Jesus. Amen. Oh, yeah, man. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. An everlasting covenant. This covenant's going to go on for eternity. That's fantastic. To be God, oh, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. He will always be our God. He will always be our God. It, it, there's no point where God's going to start. Well, you guys are doing pretty good. I'm not going to be your God anymore. That's not going to happen. He's, he's promised us. He will always be our God. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings. All the land of Canaan, it's going to belong to Israel for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. He will be their God. And God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be assigned the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male throughout your generations, whether born in your house or bought with your money from any foreigner who is not of your offspring. Please understand this buying of people. It's not a bad thing. It's not like slavery. He's, they're buying them. To care for them. Do you understand that? And, and, and in fact the person works for the other person. And then once they get enough money. They're able to buy their own freedom. They, they get to buy themselves. Or they can stay. And it's up to them. They're being treated well. Please don't take this to be a bad thing. In, in light of all the garbage you hear today. 
So, um, both he who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money shall surely be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh, an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. If you refuse, if you refuse your parents refuse to get you circumcised as a Jew, not as a Gentile, as a Jew, then you, you will be cut off. He has broken my covenant. So the sign of the covenant. You, it's interesting. If you look at the covenants of the Bible, all the covenants are written in blood. The marriage covenant is in blood. The, uh, I could send you an email. I don't want to talk about that stuff, but it's kind of weird. And there's kids here and, and I'm here. <laughs> and my wife's not here, so I better not get into those things. But um, the, um, uh, the circumcision thing, it's a covenant. It, it's on the eighth day. An interesting thing about the eighth day for all you who are nurses, you know this stuff. But the eighth day of a child's life, there's, there's more vitamin K running through a child than any other time. There's, there's prone, prone, prone grim running through the child. I don't know what that is. But it's a congealing uh, uh, thing that happens on the eighth day. And so the eighth day is the best time for any. And, and who would know that except God telling these people, this is the best day. This is the day I've picked. Whether he made it so that all those things happen on the eighth day because he had this in plan or not. I, I don't know. I haven't asked him yet. But so that's the best day for this to happen. And it's not a, a painful thing. It's, 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 uh, it, it's not for a child on that eighth day. Now you, you you wait till you're 40 and get it done. It's it's might no. might sting a little bit. I think they have no yeah, let's not talk about it, Shirley. <laughs> Surely we won't talk about that. Okay, what to, uh, when we're um, the the interesting thing about this whole well, let's, the circumcision thing is well, I'm going to talk about that for just one second because I did write down some notes here about that. Um, circumcision was not was not unknown in the world at this time. So it's not just the Jews. It's not just Israel that's getting circumcised at this time. It's, it's not an unknown thing. But it's something that God says, if you're going to be my people and you, go, you want the mark of the covenant, this is, this is what we're going to do. If you're not going to be part of the covenant, then don't do it. But it doesn't mean that there was other people that weren't. Um, there were undoubtedly hygienic reasons for this, especially making sense in the ancient world. Um, and and uh, in fact, if it matters to anybody, 1949 to 1954, there was this this uh, this this uh, 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 thing done, paper. There was a paper written. Uh, there was an incredibly low rate of cervical cancer among Jewish women because their husbands had been circumcised. That's, that's an interesting thing. For hygienic reasons, there's no doubt that it was a good thing. But more importantly, circumcision is the cutting away of the flesh. It's the cutting away. They cut that flesh off and they throw it away. It, it's a cutting off of the flesh. And, and as followers of Jesus, we know that we need to kill our flesh. We need to mortify the flesh. Our flesh is our sinful nature. And so that represents that, that, that cutting off, that, that separation from the flesh. And as followers of Jesus, that soul, it's such an appropriate sign, isn't it? It's a wonderful thing. We need to stop following our flesh. The whole spiritual warfare thing, for all of you who get that all screwed up with demons and there are demons under my bed and stuff, don't worry about that. Galatians 5 says spiritual warfare is this. The sinful flesh, giving into the desires of the flesh, instead of following what the Spirit of God is telling. The, the battle is between the flesh, the sinful person, and, and the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is saying, do this. The flesh is saying, do that. And you need to choose. This is the war. This is the spiritual warfare. I need to choose. Well, how do you make a choice? Well, the Spirit of God gives us discernment. We're supposed to test the Spirit. Go with what's right. Stay away from what's wrong. We should know. We should know what's right and what's wrong. Well, if you're a little confused, it's because you're not listening to the Spirit of God. Again, I tell you, 
We are sinful beings. And sometimes the flesh wins. I get it. Don't beat yourself up. Just keep coming back. Mm -hmm. just, just like we say in, 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 in all the anonymouses. Keep coming back. Come back to the Lord. Come back to the Lord. When those people lift their hands to rededicate their life to Jesus, it's because they wandered away. They started listening to the flesh. They need to come back to Jesus Christ. They need to, they need to, to stop listening to the sinful nature. But it's so easy for us, isn't it? We were born with a sinful nature. We've been listening to the sinful nature forever. It's, it's, it's what we recognize, and it's easy to go back. It's harder to follow Jesus Christ because we weren't born that way. It's harder. I get it. Don't beat yourself up. Okay. Better not talk about that anymore. Okay, so um, when we talk about uh, Abraham, Abraham and um, Je Je look at Genesis, oh, Galatians 5, 1 to 6. When we're talking about the sign of the covenant and, and we're talking about circumcision, people get confused. Paul was taking somebody on a missionary journey.